just on my way to a local weir as I'm sure you can see very very foggy out can't really see where I'm going so navigation's going to be the issue I've been here once before and it turned out quite well then sky and some stars and stuff but we're not going to get that tonight it's going to be a different sort of mood but it's definitely going to be interesting to see this is the, the level of fog we're literally just walking into mist so the head torch isn't really helping at all so i think we might be using the gps in a minute to make sure we're going the right way so i found a, a fence that goes in the same direction as the direction I'm heading so I'm just following this fence and using it as a point of reference I can just hear the uh, the water from the, the weir in the distance um, most of the way there now so it's not going to be much further uh, it's useful I can use this fence as a point of reference for the way back as well uh, just so for the fail safe just in case you don't want to rely on uh, GPS on your phone obviously that can die especially when it's this cold it's about uh, one degrees out here so battery's going to go really quickly on the phone um, I have obviously got a compass and that as well in my bag if the worst were to happen but uh, there's, a, there's a stream to the left hand side of me that takes me all the way back to where the car is so I could worst case follow that all the way back um, but yeah we're almost there now you can probably just hear the water in the in the background. So, I don't know whether you'll hear me or not with the, uh, the water in the background, um, but basically, I've um, just been down here shooting uh, the weir, and what I'm doing is I've done uh, several exposures of these like, compositions that I want, um, and I've been like painting various, uh, like painting various areas, um, and what then I'll do is I'll bring these photos up. Uh, different layers and then I'll be able to blend them together in order to get um, all the different areas that I want well exposed, well exposed and bring all the components together um, to form a composite image um, so I'm not sure what you'll be able to see but basically uh, I've got the camera set up here um, I'm shooting with the Sony A6000 uh, with the Samyang 12mm f2 lens and i've been shooting around f5.6 i've got the focus set to um it's not actually marked as infinity uh it's just before but i've actually marked the lens slightly you can just see uh if you have a look uh you can just see where i've marked the lens that's actually infinity on the lens i've done a few tests and, and got that marked um so yeah as I say, i'm shooting manual um full exposure got a uh, remote there, cable release, so I can just lock it off, ISO 100, about F5.6, and then go around and, and uh, light paint the different areas. So my foreground interest, I've got these couple of rocks down here at the bottom uh, that you can just see, and then you've got the, the end of this fence, which I'll go around to. Uh, so we're just on the, the edge of the water here with the camera. And if we go around here, we've got this bit of wall, ends in a fence and then that's on the edge of the weir and then we've got these rocks here which is our foreground interest and then out into the into the weir itself the camera just over there so what i've been doing uh, is starting off where the camera is and uh, i got a nicely exposed part of the the weir first so really moody image obviously it's very misty nice soft water um, I've then got a couple where I've been working on the uh, the foreground interest, painting all that in. Um, I've got one with me standing over it, lighting it, just to add a bit of human element. Uh, whether I add that into the final image or not, I'm not sure yet. We'll see what it looks like. Um, and then I've done another one as well where I've been working on this here. Um, I might not use all the images that I've uh, taken, but it's better to have too many than too few.
but I've always quite enjoyed um, light painting and there's definitely a little bit of a knack to it but uh, I'm, I'm by no means an expert I'm still still learning every time I come out I sometimes find that it's not until you get back in front of the computer and look at your images that you kind of learn the lessons from, uh, from that particular session um, but a few things that I have picked up over time being things like um, not necessarily going for the brightest light you can find um, and certainly not standing in one spot so you want to take your time and build the light up um, maybe over a minute or two and how long your exposures are um, obviously today I've been doing several exposures and they're around I guess a minute, minute and a half in of two minutes each so if you think say I use four images to build up my final um, image you might have, I don't know, maybe eight minutes worth of exposure time um, in order to produce that final piece. So, um, with the, the not standing still, you have to think, if you use, um, take the example of using a flash, if you have a single flash, um, it can be quite harsh, you get harsh shadows. Uh, and they say, obviously, the, the bigger the light source, the softer the light. And that goes the same when you're light painting. So, in order to make your light source bigger, you have to move around. So if I keep my torch in one position, I've got a light source that's about an inch wide, uh, however large the head is on your on your light. If I move a foot either side whilst holding my light, I've therefore got about a two foot um, wide light source. So you can imagine I can move quite a lot whilst I'm um, shooting. And by doing so, I'm making my light source very large and getting the light as soft as possible. Um, and that really does make a, a big impact on the final image. So that's one thing that I've picked up probably more recently than, than anything. But yeah, so that's why I was going for the lowest ISO. ISO 100, it has the least effect on the light. Obviously, the, the wider the aperture and the, uh, the higher the ISO, the more of an effect it's going to have. Um, on your light source, so if you wanted to get a single um, single bright uh, circle of light you could crank the ISO up, open the aperture and get it over with and done with it in a second but it doesn't allow you to really work the scene and, and paint it all properly so yeah, low ISO close the aperture down a bit um, and then choose a, a less bright torch it's not always the brightest that's the best for this kind of thing um, that's where I'm, I'm at with it at the moment This is obviously the first video of, of this sort that I've done. Um, we'll see how it goes, whether there's any more or not. Definitely a, a big fan of watching these kind of videos, so I thought we'd give it a quick go and uh, see what it looks like. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, if you like what you saw, you can subscribe to the channel, or uh, if you want to see more images that I've taken, head over to the website, it's uh, junderhill.com. Thank you.